good evening. If uh, you are here, thank you for being here and on time. We're just going to wait a couple more seconds or maybe another minute for more friends to join us, okay? So just hold on tight, I'll be right back. Okie dokie. Hello there. Um, we're going to get started now. So welcome to Tenopy live sharing sessions. Um, I'm going to take you through some classroom rules. All right. Hello, Isun. Welcome to my class. Please feel free to input any questions in the chat box. Okay. Hi, Elise. Okay, everybody, welcome to my class. My name is Teacher Chashna. You can also call me Teacher Chash. And I'm gonna be taking care of this Tenopy live sharing series. I'm gonna be here for six sessions, okay? For six sessions every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. So how's, it, how's my classroom session going to work? We're gonna to be together for 20 minutes, okay? Feel free to input any questions or comments in the chat box. Please do not submit repetitive or irrelevant messages in the chat box because I'm using the chat box to communicate with all of you at the same time. Do raise your hand when prompted, so I will ask you some questions, so please raise your hand. Or if you'd like to answer my question or ask me a question, raise your hand, okay? Please be polite to me, your teacher, as well as your other classmates here, as you would in real life in any other classroom space, okay? An online classroom is not any different from an um offline classroom for any technical trouble this is what i need you to do just exit and rejoin when you rejoin the session it will reset the settings and you should be able to hear me otherwise just leave me a note in the chat box and i'll see if i can help you okay all right so we have audrey elise Faiz, henry hong tie isun meng hao ching tian ying li hi welcome to my session okay so when you see the blue slides, it means I'm going to teach you something new. In this series of Tenopi's live sharing sessions, we are going to tackle the comprehension closed passage and open-ended questions in comprehension passages. Does that make you feel a little bit worried? If you're worried about these two sections of your paper too, closed passage and comprehension, can you raise your hand for me? Click the little raise hand button. If you find that the comprehension open-ended and the closed passage sometimes makes you a little nervous, please raise your hand and leave your hand raised. Okay, leave it up there because I want to see. Okay, I got it. So a couple of you do feel a little nervous handling these sessions. Not to worry. Okay, across the next six sessions, I will find a way, or rather I already know the way. Okay, I'm going to teach you. How can we make this simple? The keyword here is simplify. Simplify the skills required for you to ace it, okay, and for you to do well. I got it, Leong. You have some struggles with vocab. You're not the only one, you know. Uh, it's all about some tips and tricks that I'll take you through the way. Now, what am I going to do in these six sessions? For the first three sessions, so today and for the next two Tuesdays, I'm going to do close passage. So we're going to look at something called contextual clues. Contextual clues help us understand what the passage is all about. Then we're going to determine what clues are relevant, what's important, what's useful, and how can we use the clues to arrive at the most accurate and precise answer? Because sometimes we fill in the blank in the closed passage, and then teacher says that it's not an accurate enough answer. So what do they mean by that? We'll go through that too. And then in lessons four, five, and six, that's probably going to be in December, we're going to do open-ended comprehension, okay? We're going to look at inference questions. What is an inference? How to plan our answer to make sure you are answering the question properly. 
And how do you paraphrase rewriting in your own words to be accurate? Okay, so that's the purpose of this TLS series. And today we're gonna get into comprehension clues and our session today is on a hunt. What are contextual clues? So today I want you to be able to identify contextual clues in the passage that are relevant to the blank. What is context? Context refers to information that helps readers, that helps you accurately interpret the meaning of the text, okay? Accurately interpret the meaning of a text. What do I mean by this? Every passage, every paragraph has a purpose. And what is that purpose? It could be about introducing something new. Maybe the first paragraph is an introduction to the Olympic Games. So when did the Olympic Games begin? Which year did it start? Why did it start? And then maybe paragraph two is all the different types of champions or the different categories of champions in the first few years of the Olympics. So the context of the second paragraph is who were the champions? So the first paragraph context was, what was it? Tell me in the chat box. The first paragraph context was the history. Very good. The first paragraph context was the history of the Olympic Games. And then the second paragraph context is who were the champions? Manghao, did you have something you wanted to tell me or was that by accident? So context can take many forms, just like what I told you. No problem, Manghao. It can tell you in background information or details about circumstance, environment, or time frame, like which year did it happen in or which months did it happen in? Now, uh, let me give you an example over here. This is a question, okay? Bill felt remorse for his foolish actions. He hung his head in. What are we talking about here? Very good, Faiz. Very good, Wayne. But what are we talking about here? Audrey, you're not supposed to see yourself. You're just supposed to see me. Can you see me? As long as you can see me, okay? Audrey, if you can see me, you're doing the right thing. For this session, you don't turn on your camera, okay? And I will let you know when you can turn on your microphone. Okay, Wayne, I got it. You've got perhaps embarrassment, but hang on. This part here, oops. This part here, this first sentence, Bill felt remorse for his foolish actions. What is that about? We are talking about, yes, absolutely, a feeling. And it's a certain situation. So the first thing that we have here, let's see, let me use my annotation. Hang on. Okay. So firstly, we know it's a feeling. And then we know that the feeling is remorse. And he's feeling the remorse because of some action he took that was foolish. Good. Very good vocab words coming in the chat box okay very good words coming in the chat box oopsie here you go everybody should just be able to talk to me okay all righty so uh you have a feeling you know what the feeling is and it's based on a foolish action so he hung his head in he hung his head in shame oopsie that's not working let's do this color Shame, embarrassment, very good word choices there. Yes, regret. What else? Any other keywords that you would use? Yes, Audrey. Come on the microphone, Audrey. Any other keywords that you would use? Shy. Um, shy. Okay, Audrey, let's discuss that as a class group. Okay, uh, Audrey? I'm gonna take you off of microphone now and I'll bring you back on if you have more questions. So our friend Audrey said shy. Do you think with a foolish action you would feel shy or would you feel more of embarrassment? Who thinks shy? Raise your hand. Who thinks shy? Okay, all right. Who thinks embarrassment? Raise your hand. Ah, good. This is all about context. The context here is usually you are shy if you meet someone new, 
you are shy if you need to go do public speaking, you are shy if maybe you thought you made a mistake, okay? But in this case, it was something foolish. It was something foolish. The idea of foolish means it's something he wishes he didn't do. And it's something he regrets. It's a regretful action. So the context, although the word, um, although it, it, shy could be an option, it's not specific enough. This is what I mean about accuracy in closed passages. So only acceptable words are shame, embarrassment, or regret. Audrey, did you understand what I meant by why shy is not acceptable? Let me know in the chat box, okay? Everybody else, well done. Okay, moving on now. We're going to look at the first type of contextual clue. There are five types. So over today and next week, I'm going to cover five different types. Today, I'm going to do two, okay? The first type of contextual clue is a definition explanation clue. What do I mean? Sometimes a word or phrase meaning is explained immediately after it's been used. Let me give you an example. I returned home to sulk after playing poorly in the competition. My silence was clear to everyone. I was brooding and in a bad mood. Let's do a poll. Based on the above, what do you think the underlying word means? The underlying word we're looking at here is sulk. And some clues that we have here are brooding, silence, bad mood. So I'm going to leave this up. That's going to give you a poll. Now, poll for me. What do you think the underlined word sulk means? Does it mean shy and awkward? Does it mean quiet and thoughtful? Or does it mean silent and bad tempered? What does it mean? Come on, voting's just for fun. And the poll is closing in three, two. If you haven't voted yet, take your chance right now. And one, wow, everyone voted, fantastic. So majority said, 73% said silent and bad tempered. 7% said quiet and thoughtful. 20% said shy and awkward. Okay, thank you for submitting your responses. Let's take a look again. I returned home to sulk after playing poorly in the competition. So we know that the main character here is not happy. He played poorly. My silence was clear to everyone. I was brooding and in a bad mood. So this is what I mean by a definition explanation clue. If you did not know what the word sulk means, you can find clues here. Some clue examples are silence, brooding, bad mood. You can also look at the word poorly. These are contextual clues to tell you how the character was feeling in the event you don't know what word to put there. So absolutely, for those of you who voted, it is C, silent and bad tempered. Why? Shy and awkward doesn't fit because of the word bad mood and he did badly in a competition. So because of that, it's all about being shy. Remember shy is when you're like, oh, oh, you're new and I don't know what to say to you. And awkward, you're like, it's awkward silence. You don't really know what to talk about. So it's not A. B, quiet and thoughtful. This doesn't have the right kind of emotion. Okay, sulk is like, I'm grumpy. I don't wanna talk to anybody. Wow. So it doesn't give me the full emotion behind the word sulk. Usually sulking is like you cross your arms or cross your chest, you stomp, 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 you sit in your bed, you sit in your room and you don't talk to anybody. And you give everybody a big bad frown, all right? So quiet and thoughtful doesn't encapsulate, doesn't give me the full meaning, silent and bad tempered does because the silence is mixed up with being in a bad mood and bad tempered. So now that we have identified the context, we know the context, it's about a competition and he's not done well. We know the meaning now. Can you give me some synonyms for sulk? Tell me in the chat box, what are some synonyms for sulk? I'm gonna open up the chat box so you can talk to each other, but tell me in the chat box now, what do you think is appropriate synonym for sulk? Grumpy, very good, Wayne. Fuming, says Henry. Well, fuming is more of angry. Can you give me a better word? 
I would tell you fuming is not accurate enough. Any other words, students? Wayne, I see your hand up. Would you like to come on the microphone? OK, I got it. Or Wayne Leong, I should say. I realize I have two Waynes here. OK, so we have grumpy, we have frustrated, we have unhappy, we have frowning, sniffing, throwing a tantrum. Very, very good vocab words here. OK, I'm going to close the chat box. So words that I would accept for sulk are grumpy. So take down some vocab words here, OK? Grumpy, frustrated, bad-tempered, moody, brooding. OK, brooding. These are good synonyms for sulk, OK? All righty, so that's the first type of contextual clue. The definition of the word or the definition of the idea is given to you in the passage. OK, I'm just giving you a one, two sentence example, but imagine if this is a complete comprehension close passage. Let's look at contextual clue type two. Restatement and synonym clues. Aha, this might be quite familiar. This actually happens a lot in your comprehension close. Sometimes a hard word or phrase is said or re-expressed in a simpler way. We use a synonym that you might know. Let's try another one. That was a brilliant riposte, wouldn't you agree? Wendy remarked. It was the best counterattack in the entire debate competition, Henry exclaimed. All right. Oh, I know we have a Henry in class today, but okay, so we have this question. I'm gonna shoot you another poll now. What do you think the word riposte means? A quick, clever reply? A reason given in support of an idea or a verbal answer. Remember, the context is a debate competition, right? Henry says it's a debate competition and it was the best comeback, counterattack. So what kind of a word is that? What do you think riposte means? Okay, and the poll is closing in three, two, one. Okay, so 50% of you said A, 42% of you said B, and 8% of you said C. Let's take a look. Was it A, a quick clever reply, B, a reason given in support of an idea, or C, a verbal answer? We know that Henry said it was a counterattack. That's a clue. And that is almost a synonym to repost. So it's A, a quick, clever reply. It's a counterattack, or I use the other word called comeback. It's one word, okay? Comeback. Comeback. Now that we've identified the context, look, the context over here is a debate competition. Okay, it's a debate competition. And we know that it was a counterattack. Wendy is talking about how it was amazing. So clearly you've got ideas like clever, quick. A reason given in support of an idea is too vague. B is too vague. And a verbal answer just isn't specific enough. Okay, so it's A. I'm gonna open the chat box again. Can you tell me what is a possible synonym for the word repost? Now you learned a new vocab word, repost. But can you tell me another vocab word? Argue, argument says fire is good. Now I wouldn't say quarrel fire is. Quarrel is to start a fight. This is when two people are debating. So this is my opinion, this is your opinion, and you go back and forth, back and forth. So a repost wouldn't be a debate. A repost would either be a counterattack, a comeback. Any others, anyone else? It has to be fast, says Hong Tie. Yes, not shouting, Jaden. Shouting is not the same as giving a really, really good response. Response is another one. A clever response, yep. So we have clever response, a comeback, yep. We've got comeback, anything else? 
Any other words? Yes, Meng Hao, we're looking for synonyms for the word repost. Henry asks, what about answer? Answer is like number C. It's not specific enough because it needs to be a really good answer. So it could be a smart comeback. Okay? All righty. What I'd like for us to do now is, it's your turn. It's a mini little homework. You don't have to send it in to me, but hang on, okay? Look at the question. The heat wave this year has been unbearably intense. I worry that it might lead to bushfires again, Sylvia lamented. So we're talking about a heat wave. It's been intense and it might lead to bushfires. That means like forests and bushes catch fire. I know the heat wave is certainly a harbinger of more damage. So we know this word harbinger has got to do with the word heat wave and it's going to cause problems. It's causing damage. What you need to do for your homework is first things first, tell me what type of contextual clue is it? Is it a definition explanation clue or a restatement synonym clue? And then tell me, is it A, B or C? A, a consequence of past actions is harbinger. Harbinger, a consequence of past actions. B, the cause or reason for a problem. Or C, something that signals the approach of another. That's a tricky one, okay? Now, this question's gonna be reposted into our Telegram group. All you need to do now is scan this QR code and you can join our Telegram group. In this Telegram group, you can ask me different questions and you get to answer this homework question that I just asked you. It's like a bonus, test your skills, test your knowledge, okay? I got it, Meng Hao, you think it's B? Can you please put it in the Telegram group, Meng Hao? Quickly scan this QR code now, okay, all of you? I'm gonna hold on, I'm gonna hold on tight. And I'm gonna scroll on past. What we do in all of our Tenopi programs, okay, Tenopi live sharing is to give you a little tidbit. I give you a tidbit today about context. Our online programs have English, math, and science. We do full live online classes that are between one to one and a half hours. We give you marked homework with personalized feedback. We even allow you to ask questions with us. We are here to support you and take you through it so that you become successful in school. And we also give you one-to-one -one personal sessions, okay? We also have some holiday workshops starting. We've got, so you guys are in P3 and P4, right? So we've got, uh, P5, so some of you are in P4 going to P5. We do have some courses here, P5 to P6, if you like. We also have grammar workshops. If you think you need some help with grammar, this is amazing because it's going to make sure it solves your grammar right away, okay? And the English as second language at the moment is not open, but let me know if you're interested. We also have math Tenopi live sharing sessions, okay? So if you're interested, just get in touch with the team in office. And we've got science programs too. If you're new to us, you can also join us for a free trial class. This is a QR code. And I'm gonna drop you a little note right now in the chat box. So I wanna say this, thank you so much for joining me today. All right, you might've been having dinner, you might've been wanting to go play some games or go play outside, um, but you didn't, you were here with me and thank you so much. So I want you to know that you can contact us. I've given you the contact details in the chat box and I'll be back next week. Same time, same place. And I'm gonna go through the next set of contextual clues. Contextual clues are very, very important to comprehension closed passages. It's the magic, it's a magical secret trick. Once you identify context, you'll be able to get closer to the right answer to fill in the blank, okay? So come next week. Bye everyone, thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Halpo. Bye, Jingtian. Bye, Jesse. You're welcome, Faiz. Audrey, you have a question? Yes, I kind of like scan. Oh, yeah. you, do you want me to go back to the QR code? Yeah. Okay, which one? Trial class or to submit the homework? No, it's the QR code. Yeah, for which one? This QR code is for you to join our Telegram chat group where you can write to me to ask me questions.
Okay. Were you able to scan it now? Oh, oh she is a cannot be a student already. La. Oh, she is? Okay. Well, yeah. you can also join the chat group to send in the homework question from tonight because we're just trying something out. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'll be a great way for Audrey to also see, Audrey and yourself, mommy, to see um, what other questions are coming in. And if you want, we can also support you over there. Okay. Okay, thanks, Audrey. Thanks, Audrey's mommy. They join already. Thank you. Thank you. Jesse, Menghao, thank you for being here tonight. Bye-bye.